Okay, welcome back. My let's play of Final Fantasy XIV on the PC. Um, last time we did the burn, which was a, a dungeon, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and uh, because Alphano has gone missing. And we found his ship crashed, and there was a battle of some sort, but no sign of him. It's, uh, it's worrisome. Now, we as a player know what happened, but others do not. I had hoped to steal a moment's rest after our little outing, but it would seem duty calls. A foreign emissary arrived in my absence. Do not let us keep you then. Actually, I was wondering if you might join me. I cannot think of a guest who could fail to be impressed by the presence of the Scions. At least none I should be happy to receive. Of course, if you think it will be useful. Thank you. Let us return to my manor then. Yep, 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 yep. What brings you here? Oh, Alliance business. We have a request for Doma. Well, Hian. But that can wait. They told me you were out searching for Alphino. Did you manage to pick up his trail? Well, if he wasn't at the crash site, he might still have escaped. We have to keep searching. And we will. Alphano embarked on this journey as an emissary of Dorma, and I hold myself responsible for his safe return. I will have our shinobi in the provinces search for him as a matter of urgency. Chin up, Alize. You'll get to admonish your brother for his recklessness yet. Well, someone has to do it. I'm sure he's going to be fine. There is one thing I'm not sure about, though. You said it was the Emperor's personal guard that attacked Alphino's airship. But the Popularis would never have been able to arrange the prisoner exchange without Varus's blessing. So why would he sabotage his own mission? They may not have been acting on Varus's orders. The guard answer not only to him, but to his family, the Crown Prince included. When Yotsuyu summoned Tsukuyomi, Asahi was quick to proclaim that a dormant citizen had violated the terms of our agreement, that the negotiations had failed. And it is this version of events that is now being repeated across Garlemald. To hear the tale, one would think the prisoner exchange never took place. Plainly, someone is manipulating matters from the shadows, most likely Xenos, or whoever it is that wears his face. Whichever Asian you mean, we all know the nature of our adversary. The servants of Chaos are true to their name. Their meddling has cost Dorma a chance at peace. Whoever it was that loosed his personal guard, the Emperor cannot be ignorant of these developments. We must proceed on the assumption that our treaty is indeed in tatters.
But come, Lise. You have journeyed far. Let me hear your petition. Right. So, the big news is that Alamigo has agreed to join the Eorzean Alliance. To make it official, and discuss where we all go from here, the leaders of the Five Nations are planning to hold a meeting, and we were hoping you might come too. We've already seen what we can achieve when we work together, and the Alliance hopes to work even more closely in future. They think it's our best hope of keeping the Garleans in check, and I agree. As do I. By coordinating our efforts in the East and West, we may be able to discourage them from committing their forces to a single front. I accept your invitation. I must, however, ask for time to attend to some pressing matters here. In light of recent events, the risk of Imperial reprisals is greater than ever, and I would not leave Dorma unguarded. Ere I depart, I must shore up her defenses. Understood. I'll let the Alliance know. We'll wait to hear from you before setting a date. The meeting's to be held at the Royal Palace in Alamigo, incidentally. Do you remember the way? Well enough. Please assure my hosts that I will not keep them waiting any longer than I have to. Consider it done. And thank you for agreeing to come. If we all put our heads together, we're sure to find the best way forward. For everyone. Why would you have a meeting in a place where you don't even have a table? My advisors and I presently convene to discuss the matter of Dolma's defenses. You are welcome to stay, of course. Had you not offered, I would have requested leave to remain. Where the Asians are concerned, naught may be left to chance. As ever, we would benefit from your experience. I thank you for coming, Lys, even if it was on official business. I had hoped there might be time to show you the land you helped to save, but I will settle for a fleeting visit if, I ne if needs must. There never does seem to be enough time for anything, does there? But I did get to see a little of the Enclave. You've made excellent progress, I must say. And soon you'll have the chance to see how we're getting on, too. Till the meeting, then. Um, Mang, I was wondering if I might have a word with you before I go. In private. Go on, my friend. I will send for Hakuro and the others in the meantime. Great, I'll wait for you at the docks. In private, you say? Docks, you say? Mod, eh? Okay. I don't know why I'm sprinting when I have a mount. I don't know why I thought I couldn't mount. But now that the sprint, now that the sprint is happening, we're gonna we're gonna let it carry me. Thanks for coming. Though I knew you've probably guessed what I wanted to talk about. Alize, she's acting as if everything's all right, but it's clear she's barely coping. The Alize I know is overbearing, willful, and reckless, and that's fine. It's how she deals with feeling weak. She has to keep moving or she's afraid she'll fall apart. A lot like me. The thing about people like us is that we need someone to keep an eye on us. I had Papalimo, and now I have my friends in the Resistance, and Alizé has you in the Scions. Before you start, I'm not saying you're neglecting her. I'm sure you aren't, and I'm sure you won't, but she's a good friend, and when I see her like this, I can't help worrying. So please, make sure you give her all the support she needs, alright? Leave it to me. Okay, why is my... Why am I fisting? Thank you, Mang goes without saying, but if there's anything I can do, you only need to ask. Well, I'd best be off. See you in Alamigo.
Ah, there you are, my friend. Everyone is assembled, so let us begin. If we are to ready ourselves for invasion, we shall need manpower, provisions, and time, all of which are in notably short supply. Candid as ever, Yugiri, and correct, I concede. Fortunately, I have an idea. Tis plain no single nation can stand against the might of the Empire. And it was only with the aid of others that Dorma succeeded in winning her freedom. So, I mean to take a leaf out of our Eorzean friend's book and form an alliance of our own. In addition to those with whom we already share an understanding, I would reach out to Hingashi and Suinosato, and further afield to the myriad peoples of Nangsha and Dalmasca. I am under no illusion. Not all will answer the call. Yet disparate though we may be, we are united in our desire for freedom. If our neighbors could be made to see what is at stake, Asian machinations and all, cooperation need not be so far-fetched a notion. It may even seem practical. Under the guidance of our former leader, Master Louis Soi, we once strove to unite the fractious city-states of Eorzea. I dare say that experience shall be of use in your endeavor. We should be glad of your wisdom. For the record, I would have been in favor of this plan even if it hadn't been my grandfather's, but I have to ask, how will we secure the time to carry it out? Not that anyone has forgotten, but the Garleans have airships. Lots and lots of airships. Should they catch wind of our plan, they could send an armada to overwhelm us before our alliance had even begun to take shape. Not if we deny them access to the skies. During our time in the burn, the Warrior of Light and I chanced upon some elegant ruins. Oh? As such ruins go, they were not particularly unusual. But something about the surrounding land struck me as odd. Faint though it was, its ethereal residue was uncannily similar to that of Azizla. Identical, in fact. For locations so far removed to share a single etheric signature is all but impossible. I conclude, therefore, that the Allegans created the floating continent with land taken from the burn. While that is a most intriguing theory, I fail to see what relevance it has to Dorma's defense. Azizla was enclosed in a powerful energy barrier, impenetrable even to an agrius class battleship. It occurred to me that those ruins may have enjoyed similar protection. I have no proof, but the Warrior of Light did report seeing a structure resembling other known Allegan field generators. All right, but even if we could put up such an energy barrier, it surely wouldn't extend beyond the limits of the burn. So what's to stop the Garleans flying around it? Fuel. The Dalmascan capital, Rabanasta, was a key imperial refueling point in the east. By laying waste to it as a lesson to the rest, the empire greatly hindered its own operations in the region. If an Imperial fleet were to advance upon Dorma, it would now have little choice but to travel, as the crow flies, over the burn. I see. A word of caution. Even assuming the generator still functions, raising a barrier of such a scale will require a prodigious amount of energy. And few places are so bereft of suitable crystals as the burn. Hmm. 
Hmm. A source of energy. Tell me, did the Allegans make a habit of launching things into the sky? A curious question. Besides Azaz La, I know of only one other notable instance. The Red Moon Dalamud, whose fall triggered the calamity. Just the two occasions, you say? Then I believe I may have a solution to our energy problem. You do? I may. To find out for sure, we would need to visit the Azim Steppe. Which would, I now see, present the perfect opportunity to discuss an alliance with the Zayla tribes. <laughs> How very neat. What say you then? Shall we see whither this road leads? Um, I don't know if that really helps us get Alpha no back or find him or anything. It is settled then. I will journey to the Azim Steppe with the Scions. Yugiri and Hakuro, I leave our other neighbors to you. My apologies, but I won't be joining you. I'm no etherologist, and what skills I do possess are unlikely to be of any great use to the mission. But more importantly, it seems to me that the ruins and the burn warrant attention. And so, while you are away securing an energy source, I will engage our friends at Garland Ironworks to undertake a complete overhaul of the field generators. We'll need them in good working order if our plan is to succeed. I trust there are no objections. Have care on the burn. Have care on the step. From what I hear, the Zayla like fighting with friends almost as much as foes. Good luck. Just the three of us, then. Very well. Shall we make first for, reu for reunion? Well, let's play a second teleport real quick. Finally coming back to Azim's step a little bit. So, this is the Azim's step. The tales do not do it justice. If you think the view is impressive here, wait until we reach higher ground. Actually, seeing as it's your first visit, permit me to show you my favorite spot. tire of this vista. The endless fields, the boundless skies. Tis a sight to make a man forget his cares. But not his purpose, I trust. Might this be a fitting moment to tell us what we are doing here? Of course. During my time with the Mole, I learned some few myths of this land. One goes thus. In the distant past, when all seemed doomed, a wayfaring soul came unto the steppe. Venturing into the northern crag, he received of Nama a sliver of her essence, a shard of the shining moon, and with it clove the tainted land from the earth. The end thus averted, to these fields did the wayfaring soul return, and venturing once more into the northern crag, he buried the shard and made unto the heavens an offering of blood. A tainted land cloven from the earth and an offering of blood to the heavens, as is La and Dalamud. 
That was my thinking, yes. And you believe that yonder mountains hide an artifact possessed of sufficient power to raise Azizla up to the heavens? I suppose that might suffice. Worth a closer look, would you say? I would. Okay, I don't really exactly know what we're talking about here. From here, we shall travel to Molo. There we may ask Serena about the particulars of the myth and raise the matter of an alliance with the rulers of the steppe. Away we go. A lot more voice acting nowadays than uh, in the early game. Stepping up their budgets. Dean, Mang, I am glad of your visit and the opportunity to welcome a new friend. How may we serve you? There is a matter I would discuss with the mole. It concerns not only the peoples of the steppe, but of every land in the Far East. A shard of the shining moon left behind by a wayfaring soul, and you need this to protect our lands. I do. My friends and I wish to find the shard and ascertain the extent of its power. Will you tell me more of the place where it lies buried? This northern crag. If that is your wish, in the mountains to the north there is a cavern called the House of the Crooked Coin. Inside this cavern are pillars of stone that legend holds to be the source of Nama's power. There, I believe, you will find what you seek. Ah, yes, I know the place. Tis a brisk walk from here. And what are your thoughts on an alliance? Should the Empire return, our lands will be engulfed in a storm of conflict whether we will it or no. If we do not stand together, we will fall apart. This I believe with all my heart. However, however, among the tribes of the steppe, there are those who revere Nama above all else. To them, the pillars are sacred and not to be disturbed. Should you proceed as you propose, such tri tribes are like to spurn an alliance, prompting others to follow their example. This is my concern. But it is not by no means certain that the pillars will provide the power you seek. Ere you risk the ire of the followers of Nama, might you not first visit the House of the Crooked Coin? If all is as you hope, we may then consider how best to earn their blessing. I thank you for your counsel. We will do as you suggest. I have no desire to give offense to those with whom I would join hands. Thank you for your understanding. Though the mole may reign over the steppe today, this decision will shape the days to come, and we would not force others into war against their will. Nor are we. A hundredfold stronger are they who choose to fight of their own accord. The Salmon Muffin Shakshuka. Eggs perfectly poached and robust spicy tomato sauce. I guess I'll take the tea. Will of the Moon. It seems the time has come to put my skills to use. Pray lead the way to the House of the Crooked Coin.
Whoa, look at this thing. How very out of place. Such an abundance of ether. Are we in luck? We are. This is an elegant artifact, most likely built to regulate the flow of ether. I strongly suspect the ancients used it to stem the flow from here to the burn. That would explain how they were able to untether what became Aziz La from its surroundings. But were we to throw open the floodgates, the resultant deluge would surely be sufficient to raise our wall. And in restoring the flow, we may also restore life to the wasteland. Hmm. What is it? While the device itself harbors a surfeit of ether, the opposite is true of the surrounding area. An effect of regulation, perhaps. A similar phenomenon seemed to be occurring in Doma. Whatever the explanation, the answer will not reveal itself here. We have seen what we needed to see. Let us return to Mol Illo. Mol Illo? Oh, that could be a capital I. That always fucks you up. Yeah, that probably is a capital I. I don't know why I thought it would be a lowercase l. And then two lowercase l's that are different size. <laughs> oh, well. You found that what you seek, then. Great indeed is the Dusk Mother's power. If not, less will suffice to protect our lands. The blessing of the other tribes must now be sought. Of course. But to which tribe should we appeal? There are many who worship Nama, but none are so fervent in their faith as the Dotharo. Their consent shall be the key. The Dotharo. Lee spoke of them. A warlike tribe possessed of unique customs and beliefs. I sense their cooperation will not be easily won. Nay, but it will be well worth the effort. The Dotharo fear nothing, de death least of all, and our alliance would be greatly strengthened by their presence. Let us go to Dotharo Ka and treat with their Khatun, Sadu. Yeah, it would be really far away, but luckily I picked up this etherite, so it's not so far away. And we've got the turtle to guide us. What do you need? Coming in hot. All right. You again. Our matters demand our time. Other matters demand our time, Khan. Unless it is battle you seek. Alas, not. Quite the opposite, in fact. Talking. Always talking. You say the pillars hold great power. Of course they do. 
They are the source of Nama's strength. To the Dotharal, no place is more sacred, and we will make ash of any who would defile it, though I see this is not your wish. You see the wisdom of our proposition, then. You will join hands with us. I said nothing of joining hands. You wish to wield Nama's power to defend these lands, and this I will allow. But for leaving the step to fight the men in iron, I would have something in return. Namely? Namely, battle with you, Khan. The Nottam ended ere it began. I would face you again, alone, without distraction. Defeat me, prove yourself the stronger, and you shall have the Dotharals your allies. Surely these are agreeable terms. Well, this is not a wholly unexpected turn of events, though I had assumed I would be the one required to fight. Alas, alas the Khatun has made her choice. Shall we dance? Oh, if only I was a dancer. No. Ha. It shall be a battle the step shall not soon forget. Uh, already my soul burns brighter. Prepare yourself, Khan, and wait. Await me outside the Ka. I will gather my witnesses and join you anon. Yeah, I'm not worried about that shit, because I'm a motherfucking red mage. shall serve as well as any. I shall enjoy this, Han. Is this truly necessary? Have you no peaceable way of making decisions? Speak not of peace. You stand before proud warriors of the Dothal. In the heat of battle do our souls burn brightest. We lay low the strong that we may rise higher. That is our way. The way of might! There is no other! Oh, they did not want for conviction. <laughs> Indeed. It's what makes them such dangerous enemies. And such useful allies. Enough talk! It is time to fight! Sounds good to me. We don't do much of this nowadays. Alright, let's uh, do some shit like that. Okay, we'll do some shit like that. There we go. Oh, you're looking a little rough there, Sadu. <laughs> Think I'm worried about that bullshit. Oh, phase two. Phase two, here we go. In death do our soul sing! You're still dead, bitch. Phase three. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Do I need to bother with the fucking ads? Just getting toasted. 
Look at this. Look at this. Just devastation. Oh my god. What? You have barely hurt me. Why are you insulting me? <laughs> In death do our souls sing! I don't know, I'm just assuming I gotta destroy the stellar choose. Done now? Are you done? Because I can just cure myself. Oh, she's not done. How it burns! I wonder what that's gonna do. <laughs> Probably nothing good. Death to our soul sing. Yeah, Is that true. <laughs> now it's over. Yes, yes, not since the Nardom has my soul burned so. Come, we have only just begun. Enough! You were not granted leave to set the step ablaze. Well, well, the sun has come out to play. Be gone, Moonstruck Oranir! I am busy! Fool of a Dothal! Have you forgotten the face of your master already? The sun will never set! From his seat on high, he reigns over all, now and forever! Yet what should he find here but a battle to determine the fate of the steppe? A battle waged without his blessing! This will not stand. You, Doman! You who come to petition the warriors of this land, forget that all Nama's children are wards of the Oranir. As first among my brothers, your petition is mine alone to judge. <sighs> These words are as wind from a horse's backside. Plentiful. But your act sings more sweetly. Let her speak for you. <clears throat> Insolent child. You will learn your place. Forgive me, Brother Magni, but we have an arrangement with the Dothal. We will not abide any interruptions. <laughs> so be it. The sun will pass judgment on all. Didacul, join me. is in good company. We may dance alone.
Beg not for mercy, for you will have none. Bear witness to the power and the glory of Azim! Constantly at each other's throats like rabid dogs. Gods, I'm turning into her. <clears throat> I have not the patience for this, but if we must fight, let us at least be brief. Come. Uh. Oh, you're fighting as Yashtola. Okay. So she's a white mate. Alright. So basically just another spam one spell over and over. Yep. I specifically avoid doing these fights as a healer. Bow down before me! That's not good. Maybe I should kill one. There you go. Problem solved. Kneel or die! Mark well and learn! Concentrate! What the fuck? I'm supposed to be like helping out and doing. Oh my goodness! Kneel or die! Yeah! Yeah! Enough! Yep, this is just great. Down before me, Mark. Well, and learn. Oh, he killed or die. Died a cool. Bow down before me! I think we Tremble got this one. The sun. Just burn him down. Just, just burn him. Just, oh god. What is happening? Oh. Let us be about it. Fifty seven thousand damage. Every step you take, every move you make, the sun sees all. Oh boy, you get to smash a button for three, two seconds. Oh, they made this one a little bit more intensive. Look at that. Yeah. Etha, to me. Hmm. Have at you.
Never have I felt such bliss in defeat. Twas a battle to burn soul and flesh to ash. We Dothal will lend you our strength as promised. Nama's power is yours to wield. What does the sun say to that? <laughs> the sun is not driven by base motives such as yours. But I, they have been judged and found worthy. It is the way of the Oranir to accord recognition and respect to the strong. You have made sufficient proof of your strength. The sun shall answer your call. You have our thanks. We are glad to call you allies. You? By what are you called? Oh boy. You stole her. Why? Are you... Are you my Nama? I beg your pardon? In battle, you shone with all the majesty of the full moon's light. Your healing touch, the embodiment of the Dusk Mother's love. Long had I wondered if my Nama might not be a woman of the steppe. Beholding you, I am all but certain. Now, look into my eyes. Could it be? Could you be? I am. Not interested, little son. Try again when you've become a man. Oh! <laughs> Sun, crave you salve to soothe the ache, fire to sear the wound in your heart. We have wasted enough time here. Siren awaits for word of our success. Stola's fucking savage, man. He went not only to contend with Sadu, but Magni too? Such a fierce battle that must have been. Yet here you stand triumphant. Having passed such a test, they could not well deny you their allegiance. The Mole will make no such demands. Weak though we are, we will gladly stand with you. The steppe is our home, and we will defend it with all our being. You have my heartfelt thanks. Of all the tribes of the steppe, there is none I would rather have at my side. God's willing, many more will rally to our cause. I shall send you word when we have answers from all the tribes. I cannot thank you enough, Serena. None of this would have been possible without you. And they teleported us right back here. That's amazing. They really are picking up on this stuff. 
We have the requisite consent. It is time to put Nama's power to use. If the ether flows as planned, all that remains is to have the ironworks engineers do their work at the ruins. Come, let us return to the house of the crooked coin. You got it. Look at the little mang at the helm of this ship. Wonderful. Just wonderful. I shall begin at once. You may wish to step back. Did it work? It did. Ether may flow freely to the burn once more. pretend to understand what you did, Yashtola, but you did it. Thanks to you, and Mang, of course, we have taken a momentous step towards securing our defenses. Now, as much as I believe a rest is in order, we should probably make haste back to the Enclave. Agreed. The others may already have returned from their missions, and I would know how things stand. As would I. Without further ado, then. Judging by your triumphant expressions, I take it all went well on the Azim step. Indeed, we have secured a suitable source of energy for the barrier. Good. Tataru and I have commissioned Garland Ironworks to ensure that the field generators function as they should. A team of engineers stand ready to set out for the burn at a moment's notice. You need only say the word. I thank you for arranging their services on our behalf. The minutia of the arrangement you may leave to me. Which just leaves the small matter of our alliance. So Yugiri and Hakuro, how fared you with our neighbors? My lord, all of the factions we approached are in agreement that the Empire poses a threat, and many responded positively to talk of an alliance. From Hingashi and Suino Sato, however, we received outright rejections. The former will not break its treaty with the Empire, and the latter will not involve itself in conflict. Just as we expected, then. Well, there is not to be done about it. 
We must focus on the rest. To each of the nations that were amenable to an alliance, I will personally send a missive. And once I have attended to that, I believe we will have done everything we can to fortify Doma's defenses, for the time being at least. All of which means I may leave for the meeting in Alamigo with a lighter heart. Yugiri, Hakuro, if you would be so kind as to hold the fort in my absence. My friends, we could not have achieved so much in so little time without your help. For that I give you my heartfelt thanks. Till the meeting then. I took the liberty of asking Thancred to attend as well. He should have arrived in the Alamican quarter by now. Then let us not keep him waiting, shall we? Big, the big meeting. The big meat. Turtle away. Yashtol has told me all, and I duly told Irange and Kryle. Kryle in particular was concerned about Alphano, but I assured her that everything that can be done is being done. She agreed to continue with her own tasks for the time being on the condition that I contact her the moment there is any development. So that leaves four of us to attend the council. Arnvald is here to assist with security, incidentally, though the poor lad seems altogether too distracted for the task. Another one missing Alphano, I expect. Ah, but it's almost time. As soon as you're ready, present yourself to the guardsmen at the palace entrance. I shan't be far behind. Uh, yep, you may show me several cutscenes. Perfect. Since we're at 59 minutes, that's exactly what I want to hear. Mistress Lise, Commander Aldin, it gives me great pleasure to formally welcome the city-state of Alamigo to the Eorzean Alliance. The pleasure is ours, Your Grace. I know I speak for all Alamegans when I say that we are glad of this chance to stand with our comrades of the Alliance. And we, for our part, are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. Lord Hien of Dorma, at your service. Pray, accept my heartfelt thanks for your generous invitation. Nay, tis we who must thank you for journeying so far. And would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the part the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have played in bringing all of us together. In times of great unrest, you and yours have been our constant companions, without whom we would not be here. With apologies to Lord Hien and Mistress Alizé, it occurs to me that we have not gathered in this way since that fateful day in Uldar. The day I lost my arm and my freedom. As I lay in my cell, Never did I dream that I would one day be given the chance to represent my homeland at this council. I would not even be alive had you not plucked me from the jaws of death. You, Yugiri, and Alfino. Would that the lad could be with us. I too owe my presence here to Alfino. In so many ways. Until such time as he returns, I mean to carry on his good work as best I can. Come, friends. Let us leave the past in the past and turn our eyes to the future. My Lord Hian, pray tell us how things stand in the East. Having heard the rumors of dissent in Garlemald, I dared to dream of a peaceable solution. 
Hmm. The Empire will not so easily change its ways. If the Garleans have a mind to take back Doma and Alamigo, we'll be hard-pressed to stop them, even with the might of Six Nations. But while we lack the strength to fight the tide, a course may yet present itself, if we read the winds aright. The winds suggest but one course to me. One which leads from the sea unto the river and thence to the source of all our woes. The Assians. Indeed. All here have felt their blighted touch. It was the bringers of chaos who nurtured the Archbishop's tyrannical ambitions. They who bestowed upon him the secrets of summoning, as they have so many others before and since. And while they remain, we shall know no peace. Our objective is clear. The question is how to achieve it. That our enemy parades about in Xenos's skin poses problems in itself, but ere we get to them, how are we to infiltrate the Empire and get close enough to strike? While I see the wisdom in targeting the Assians, an assassination attempt on Garlean soil would do little to aid our cause, even were it to succeed. It's time we used our enemy's preferred tactic, subterfuge. You have an idea? Speak your mind, Master Thancred. None here know the enemy better than the Scions, and you may have best of all. Whatever it is you propose, we will give it fair hearing. On that you have my word. Very well, Admiral. My proposal is thus. We dispatch the Shinobi to Imperial territory. There, they sow the rumor that the Crown Prince perished in the battle for Alamigo, and that the man parading around is in fact a corpse inhabited by a servant of darkness. Well, it does have the ring of truth about it. And were the Garleans to learn that their future ruler is a puppet, the Empire would be shaken to the core. But, at the risk of sounding stupid, would they actually believe such an unlikely story? I didn't. Ordinarily not. But prior to his miraculous recovery, rumors of Xenos's death had already begun to circulate around the Empire. Ultimately, however, what the masses believe is not our chief concern. Our true objective is to create an opening for rival factions within Garlemald to exploit. Just as a war of succession erupted in the wake of Empress Solus's death. A war which raged until but recently, plunging the Imperial House into disarray as nephew and uncle grappled for the throne. It is no coincidence that one of Varus's first acts as Emperor was to name Xenos heir apparent, family feuds being so tiresome when armies are involved. Not all welcomed his choice of successor, however. There is no shortage of individuals who aspire to the throne, who would jump at any chance to seize power. The news that Xenos is not only dead, but a puppet to diabolical forces, would be too enticing to ignore. The Empire would not be quick to recover from a second war of succession. I am no stranger to infiltrating Imperial territory. With a team of operatives gathered from among the Alliance's finest, the plan should have a reasonable chance of success. Dorma already has Shinobi in place throughout the provinces. We stand ready to act, and act we must. What say you all? I'm for Master Thankry's proposal. We shine a light upon the Assian and test the Empire's unity. Twas his plot that scuttled Doma's negotiations, was it not? Why then, if we can eliminate him, 
there may yet be a chance for peace. Let us wage this war of subterfuge that we may one day lay down our arms. Gods know we never will while the Asians remain. Oh shit. That way. Sorrow. History must be changed. Who is this? Ahead looms a calamity. Ahead looms light, expunging all form and life. Twin dooms only you can forestall. Only you. What's the matter? There's... there's... a voice! Spies in our midst? Nay, I sense no such presence. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. Throw wide the gates that we may pass. Is it over? Master Thancred! Twelfth offend. Bear him to a private chamber. Have every healer make ready. Swiftly! Master Thancred remains in slumber. Though his vital signs appear stable, he's unresponsive. What could have done this? And, and why just him and not the others? I'm afraid we could not identify the cause, my lady. Our examinations revealed no wounds, nor the presence of any poisonous substances. Gods, that only makes it worse. You're to let us know the moment there's any change, all right? Thank you for coming. Knowing Thancred, he would apologize for being otherwise engaged at so crucial a juncture. In gifting us a course of action, Thancred sowed the seed of all that is to follow. We have but to nurture it as best we can. To him, I would say, rest easy, that he may wake to enjoy the fruits of our labors. Now, the matter of the mysterious voice must not be forgotten. Will you tell me exactly what happened? Alizé and I heard a voice in the moments before Thancred collapsed. It was accompanied by a severe headache, as if something were clutching at our minds. Did you experience the same thing? So, in between the voice and the pain, you felt as if you were somewhere else entirely? Your testimony confirms my suspicion. That which you experienced was, I believe, your soul being plucked from your flesh. Called. Oh, is that it? Is that all? Okay, I thought it was going to be bad. Called. I myself examined Thancred. Reach out as I may. I could not sense in him the spark of life that is his soul.
That Thancred alone was stricken so is likely due to his heightened sensitivity to the effects of ether, a consequence of his prior possession by the Asian La Habrea. The owner of the voice, whoever it may be, reached out to you, called your souls, and in so doing, caused you and yours such pain. But if that's true, where exactly are we being called to? I know not. Yet one thing is plain. Whoever waits for you on the other side is possessed of a power unlike any I have ever known. Forgive us, Lise, but may we leave Thancred in your care for a time? As if you had to ask. I may not be a scion anymore, but I'm no less a friend. Don't worry. I'll see to it that Thancred's well looked after. Just focus on solving this mystery, all right? Thank you, Lys. As the Elder Seedseer says, tis no ordinary individual we are dealing with. Nor can we discount the possibility of Asian involvement. Whoever or whatever is behind this, the sooner we find out, the better. All right, now we're getting into some real shit. I feel like the next expansion is probably going to take place in Garlemald. I mean, unless I hear some other new location pop up, that's what everyone's talking about. I just tried to call Orange on his Link Pro. He didn't respond, but I dare to hope that he possesses some knowledge we do not. Ah, Orange. Something happened during the meeting. Thancred's collapsed. A disembodied voice suddenly started. What? But that's... We should talk about this in person. Alright, we'll meet you there. That was Orange. He heard the voice too. Thanalan. Hmm. As we alone were afflicted at the meeting, I had my suspicions. But if the voice also spoke to Orange, there can be little doubt. The Scions were targeted specifically. By whom and to what end is the question, one to which we must find an answer with all possible haste. Endure. Alright. So, that leaves a total of eight quests to go before we start Shadowbringers. So I would expect within a couple videos, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Very exciting stuff. Very exciting stuff. Apparently, the best expansion. Some say the best expansion for any game ever. I don't know about that. We we will judge for ourselves. But for now, my name is Mang. Game watching has been Final Fantasy XIV. See you fine folks in the next part.